So in this video, we're going to take a look at binary multiplication. How do we perform multiplication using binary values? Um, and what does the circuit look like to perform that kind of multiplication? First, let's take a look at how multiplication works. So here is an example of binary multiplication. And what you should notice is that it's actually a lot like um, multiplication with decimal values. The way that it works is we start with the rightmost value from the second number, and we multiply that by the entire topmost value. So this is 1. Right? One times anything is that thing, and so we see that the result is copied here. Then for the next number here, we're going to repeat that process, but we need to scoot it over one place. So 0 times anything is 0. These four zeros are the result of the multiplication, and we have to add an extra 0 on the end to move it over, right? to indicate that this is starting from the second position. Then we repeat this process with the next one. Right? We see that repeat it again, scoot it over two places, and then finally the, the last zero indicates all zeros here. Then the only thing we have to do after that is add everything up, and we get our result. So what you should notice that's particularly important is that even though I multiplied two four-bit binary values together, in order, to, um, in order to get the entire product, that leads to eight bits coming out. So I actually need, in this case, twice as many bits or I guess you could get away with seven in this particular scenario. Um, so that's a lot more bits than what I originally started with. So multiplying in order to capture the operation entirely accurately right, uh, means that we're going to need more bits than what we started with. Um, in terms of the multiplication itself, it's rather easy. right? So if we think about it, we've got um, four different cases. One times one is one. One times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero and 0 times 0 is 0, that's actually the truth table for an AND gate. That is exactly the truth table for an AND gate. So the multiplication itself is actually just an AND gate, and then we're going to need a series of addition blocks to help us perform the summation part of multiplication. So let's take a look at the circuit. Here we see at the top all four bits of A coming in, and then you can see that this, this value is being multiplied by B0, using AND gates. So if B0 is a 0, that means all of these values will be 0. If B0 is a 1, that's going to give us whatever these values are, whatever the values of A0 through A3 are. And those values are all fed into an adder block. Same thing happens with B1, right? The, the exact same process happens with B1, and those are also fed into an addition block. And then you'll see that the output of that addition is fed into a following addition block with the next value. And then finally, the next value until we get the result. Now, what you'll notice then is that for some of these addition blocks, not only do they get increasingly larger, we start with 5 bits, then 6 bits, then 7 bits. You can also see the zeros, the padding that we saw from the previous slide. That's these zeros here, these grayed out zeros um, being fed into the sum blocks as well. And so that's how multiplication is uh, performed uh, using digital logic circuits. Um, some things to think about, some things that we'll talk about uh, when we discuss this topic in class are, what's the delay involved with this? How can we um, measure how long this is going to take? Is it a fast operation? Is it slow? Can we do it any faster? Are there any other mechanisms um, that might allow us to perform this multiplication operation faster than this particular example? We'll talk about all of those in an upcoming class.